Hi, this is Holly Carmichael. I'm the instructor for Chem 130, General Organic and Biological Chemistry, and I wanted to take a minute to just go over the requirements for the lab that accompanies Chem 130. This is Chem 130A. This is the online section. Again, these are two separate courses, so you're going to get a grade for each of these. Contact for me, H. Carmichael at NASH CC is head and shoulders the best way to get in touch with me, okay? That's my shortest email. Just if you have a question along the way, send me an email. I do check my email five, six times a day. I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Going down through, this is an entirely online class that has weekly assignments. Those weekly assignments are graded. That is what your grade is based on. Those weekly assignments are also part of attendance. The required material, since this is a lab and you are doing this at home, you actually have a couple of things that you're going to need to do. One, you have an e-science lab kit. So this was a $200 lab kit that was included in the cost of your tuition. This will get shipped directly to you after the enrollment verification period ends. The second thing is a molecular modeling kit that you need to purchase from the bookstore here at Nash Community College. Send me an email if you want more information about purchasing it from Amazon. That is an option, but the bookstore, it's like about the same price either way. The last two things, household items purchased at a local grocery store. You will probably have to go buy a gallon of distilled water. You may have to use your own soap and water to clean up after yourself. Okay, there are a few labs where you will have to go buy items. I try to give you a lot of leeway. Um, you don't need a lot of any one thing. So like, and for a couple of the labs, I told you like, maybe just save a piece of your sandwich and use that as one of your um, things to test in terms of nutrient content. You will need a potato. You will need some salt. Um, there are things like that that you will need. They're not really expensive, but there is a, some of the, I call them do at home labs. These are labs that are not using the e-science um, instructions, although you will actually use the e-science materials to be able to do the labs. Fourth thing, students will need internet access. It's an online class, a computer and a camera to be able to document the lab activities that you do. I will tell you when you're doing the labs, make sure you take a photo of these test tubes or take a photo of your color results for this test. If you don't do that, then you're gonna lose points. So just know to read through instructions and look for um, items that you need to document with a photo. So going down to the next, one thing I tell students, Chem 130A, this is an easy A, okay? This is an easy A course because if you look, there's no tests. There's no lab practicals. There's no exams. There's no quizzes. You have labs to do, pre-lab assignments to turn in, and then that gets handed in and it's all good to go. So how are these labs set up? So all of the labs, instructions, tutorials, everything that you have to do is posted in Moodle. Okay, now when we, I'll go to Moodle in a minute to show you. In each one, you're going to have some background information. There'll be a set of pre-lab questions that you will have to answer. Usually there's instructions. Oftentimes there's actually video tutorials to help walk you through parts of the lab to make sure you understand what you have to do. Follow the instructions, complete the lab, and then by completing the lab, you will actually download what's called the lab report sheet. This will be a report sheet posted in Moodle. If you have to insert photos, that will be indicated in the report sheet as well. There may be post lab questions in the end of the report sheet that you may have to answer. You just save all of that. Easy, it's really usually easiest to save it all as a PDF file because that's going to help it be relatively small. You just upload that, submitting it into Moodle by the due date. So you will see that all your pre-lab and report assignments for each week are always going to be due on Saturdays by 11.59 p.m. That does not mean that you have to do the lab on Saturday. That does not mean that you can't upload these assignments and complete them ahead of time. They are all open now at the beginning of the semester, but these are going to close when on their weeks that they're due 
on those Saturdays at 11.59, okay? So if you work on the weekends, then definitely you want to go ahead and start these labs either on Wednesday or Thursday to make sure that you get them done by Friday night and submit it, okay? There is no penalty for finishing them early, but that you can't complete the pre-labs. The pre-labs close. You can't even complete them after the due date. And then the lab re reports, if they're late, then they may not get graded in a timely manner. In fact, there's been times that I've had to go back and find people's labs. Um, and that's not really the goal. The goal, I have these labs designed so that they go right along with the material that we are including in the chapter. So the lab you do in week three really corresponds to what you're doing in lecture during week three. So doing them along with is really, you're going to see that it'll help you to maybe understand things a little bit better, give you a better grasp on what's going on. Okay. I will tell you that all answers to these assignments are to be your own thoughts and ideas. I do not want you to copy work from the internet. Do not search for answers to the work to just answer the questions yourself. Put them in your words, don't copy anybody else's, and don't give your answers to anyone else. Course communication. I expect that you check your email at least twice a week. Optimally, I would really like you to check your email every day. If you have problems, send me an email. I check my email every day, but I would also like you, especially in an online class, to make sure that you check your email at least twice a week so that you can respond to questions. Attendance. So you're in an online class, but we actually still have to take attendance to be sure that you're actually completing the work that you're supposed to, progressing in the class. So attendance is taken based on these assignments. So if you do not complete work for two consecutive weeks, that's like 14 calendar days. So that means if you do not complete two labs in a row, you are considered not attending. And so it's required that I actually administratively drop you. The last day to drop without penalty from this course is November 22nd, sorry, 27th. And I will tell you, the only time people drop from this class is because they stop doing the labs and they have too many zeros in lab and they need to rep repeat the lab. That's really the only reason. It's not because of low test grades, because there's no tests, but you need to make sure that you stay on top of it. So to help with that, here's the schedule, okay? So this is the last page. You really wanna make sure that you stay on top of this. Notice that you actually have three labs that are listed as e-science and you don't even have the kit yet. That is not a problem. The first three weeks of lab, you don't need the kit to do. The getting started, introduction to science, and safety labs are all labs that you just need a pen and paper to be able to complete. You just have to, um, there's a virtual lab that you will actually do. None of them require any of the chemicals in the e-science kit. So these are due the first three weeks. Week four requires the model kit that you get from the bookstore. So you don't actually need the kit for model four. In fact, week five is and six, you use the eScience background information for lab five, but you will use the model kit to do the portion that's related polarity, the nomenclature part, you will just use the e-science and it's more of a pen and paper lab. So these labs give me time to make sure that everybody has their kit, that everybody has all the materials in their kit that they need. And so starting on the 24th of September, all of these labs are going to use the e-science kit. So organic molecules, types of chemical reactions, types of matter, osmosis, chemistry of light, those are all going to use your e-science kit. So those first labs, they're really kind of to get you used to the e-science sort of way that the labs are set out. And they're using the model kit because this is a lot of time, chapter three is all about bonding, ionic covalent bonds. Um, chapter four is all about organic molecules, like building organic molecule structures and shapes of organic molecules. And so that really, those first five weeks are really kind of basic stuff. And from there, then we're really starting to talk about like the organic and biochemistry part of this course. 
So don't worry if you don't have your kit. Do get the model kit though for that because we are going to need the model kit by the fourth week. By the beginning of September, you're gonna need the model kit. So there's no excuse not to have that because you get that from the bookstore. Okay, so there's your due dates. Now, if we jump over to Moodle, I can show you. Here's another copy of the syllabus if you decide that you need another copy. Um, introduction and syllabus review. This is the, the video I'm sending you right now. There's an icebreaker padlet so you can introduce yourself to other people that are in the class. I do have a note to make sure that your mailing address in self-service is correct. You cannot have a P.O. box. So if you're if you normally get your mail at a P.O. box, that's not going to work. They cannot ship the eScience kit to a P.O. box. Do make sure that you have a physical address to be able to get your kit shipped to you correctly. And you may want to go into self-service and just double check what the mailing address is. If you've moved in the last six months, you definitely want to double check that. If you get in into trouble all any time along the way. If you find that you have broken things in your eScience um, kit when it comes, here is the link to support. They can help you to replace anything that's broken or missing from your lab kit. When your lab kit comes, it will have an inventory list that you need to make sure you go through to check and see if you have everything. So that's the sort of like very intro stuff. So here's week one. So I said, you don't have your kit yet. You don't need your kit to do this lab. So here's how I have it sort of set up. The first link is the eScience Getting Started link. When you click this, it is going to take you to eScience and it is going to go through. You can go through it any way you want. You can go through it this way. You can go from here to the next one to the next one. Some of them are little videos, short videos. Most of them are only like a minute or two long talks about some of the things that you need to be concerned about in this class because this is a chemistry lab. So you will have equipment, there is safety issues, you need to make sure you prepare. So it goes through all that. You can go just go down this direction or you can go just next and click next and next. The packing list that they want you to make sure that you go through talks about lab equipment, safety, preparation, attire, all of this. So you're going to go through, I always call this the background information, okay? This is what you really want to read through before you do the lab. That's the background information. That's getting started. Now, once you get to the end, then you have a getting started video tutorial. So if you want to watch, this is a YouTube video on the things that you're going to need in the getting started. If you get through there and you're like, okay, I think I got this. So here's your quiz. So that says it's a quiz. It's really your pre-lab assignment. It's, it's whether or not if you went through the background material in eScience, you should have no problem answering the questions in this pre-lab assignment. Then you get down to this one here. It says the fourth link you will download is called the safety agreement. So this safety agreement lets me know if you have any type of allergies, anything that I should know about. It also indicates that you have gone through this material and that you agree to abide by the safety rules for lab this semester. So you will download this file and then just upload it here. It's really quick, okay? Make sure that you only upload things that are Word docs or a PDF. I cannot open dot pages. I cannot open HEIC, which is typically those iPhone images. Make sure things are in PDF. They can be in .doc like, or DOCX, which is the Microsoft Word. Those would be fine. You can upload JPEG or PNG images, but sometimes you've got to make sure those are small enough, which is why really a PDF is the easiest. So this is a really short lab, okay, for this first week. It really shouldn't take you more than maybe 20 minutes to do. But now I've got all of the labs sort of set up this way. So here's week two. Here's the e-science, introduction to science. That's the background information. The second one is a tutorial where I talk about what you need to do in lab this week. The third one is the pre-lab. So remember the pink. 
The little pink icons mean that's an assignment. You've got to complete that. So do the pre-lab for this after you've gone through the background information. And then see here, it says download this lab report sheet to complete for the Intro to Science Lab. You download this Word document, complete it, save it as a JPEG, and then you're going to upload it here. Okay, so each week is basically going to do this exact same thing. Background information, tutorial, pre-lab to do and complete, and then any assignment, the lab report would typically be under the pre-lab, download the lab report, finish it, upload it as an assignment. Okay, so as we go through, if you get to a question, if you get to a problem, if you get to a step where you're like, I'm not sure, I don't have this, feel free to send me an email. If it's something that's related to the eScience kit itself, you would definitely want to connect with them. And that's why when you get your kit, make sure that you spend some time going through everything in that kit, checking off all of the items, making sure nothing's broken so that you've got it ready to go by that six week of the semester.